Okay, so when you hold the mic, uh, it has to be like somewhere near here, okay. uh, not too far, and this has to be facing me so I can at least see whether it's still recording. So you can hold it like that, and then like this. So face it towards you, lah. Yeah, towards me. So yeah, like that. Okay, sure. Welcome back to another video, guys. Today I'm here in Upper Boon King. It's scorching hot. I'm here with Steve, who has this Wind Space Wind Mato Chinese made bike, Chinese wheels. Japanese group set. Thank you for having me. So Steve here from uh, from MKR or Moves Knuckle Riders. Um, so what we have here today is the possibly the sexiest bike in Singapore uh, with the coolest paint finish. Not the fastest rider but um, it just looks fast. That's the most important thing. So I think many people have heard of Wind Space of late. Uh, this Chinese make. So this is the T1500 model, the Arrow model. This is custom painted as you can see. I think stock colors come in just black, blue or white. So when I first purchased this uh, bike, it was in a raw black finish. So I am actually 1.74. This is a size S. Um, which has a top tube of 51.5 so it's actually much smaller than your usual uh, major bike manufacturers uh, in small so I, I would usually ride an M for this wind space um, as opposed to S for other manufacturers but I've just kind of sized down for this the group set that came with the bike is uh, Altegra Di2 but I've swapped out some parts as you can see um, it also comes with an aero integrated bar, which is really sleek. I, I really like that. And when I first purchased this, it actually came with 50mm hyper wheels. Um, but I've since changed that out. Or I've actually kept that 50mm for uh, more climbier days. And I've put on these 65s because it just looks better. In terms of finishing kit, I'm running a Physique Antares Evo saddle which actually also uh, is custom with a goat leather uh, finish and some stitching. Um, I've kept it, I've kept Arundel mandible bar, uh, not bars, bottle cages, bottle cages uh, just, just cause it's, I think it's one of the better looking ones. In terms of cassette, I think we, this is, should be a 1128 Altegra cassette. Uh, cranks wise, I'm running a semi-compact, so 5236 uh, Dura-Ace. The other thing I think that's interesting to note is that for this aero bike, uh, it's a rim brake, which is actually my preference. Um, and one of the reasons why it drew me to buying this bike, it has the chain stay type of rim brake, so the top is quite clean. Um, and for the front brake, of course, that's your standard, uh, your standard fork mount, uh, which I've swapped out to an e-brake. I have two other bikes. So, uh, both other bikes are kind of your, your size 52 and 54. So I have a, I have a, I have a all Italian steel Villier um, Super Leggera. Also in the same colorway actually, like it's the original Romato. And then I have an Indie Fab as well um, in titanium and that's my all American build. So I got this bike direct from Windspace SG. Um, there's this gentleman, Marco, this German gentleman who, who runs that shop. So actually this was meant to just be a, a rainy day bike, right? Like a China, uh, all Asian rainy day bike. And uh, I think for many of the viewers, you would have seen this on Carousel as well for a few months. I was trying to offload it um, simply because I I like to buy a new bike every few months. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, didn't really get to sell it. I got a lot of offers, but um, in the end, decided to keep it. So I met up with uh, with my usual cycling kaki um, uh, from, I think a few guys who ride regularly with T3. And they told me about this painter at uh, near the rebound center. So his name is Asmi, a great, great guy, very honest and genuine guy, really good at his craft. I think he's been, in the spray paint business for for decades, um, so I I decided hey you know it's it's raw black finishing why not uh, pimp it out a little bit, and I've always loved this Romato finish. They have a uh, I think Cycle Project Store carries a, a Villier Cento Ten Romato that looks similar to this, but it's like in excess of eight thousand dollars. So I always uh, kind of hesitated in pulling the trigger. 
So finally, I thought, hey, if I can just spray paint this for uh, for less for le- for less than one k, why not I do that, right? And it came out spectacularly. I'm not sure if people agree with me, but I think it, it looks it looks great. So it starts at 700. I think it gets uh, progressively more expensive if you want to do different stuff. So of course, I opted to do the seat post as well. I opted to paint the uh, my integrated um, handlebars with my kids' names and all, and. Actually, even all these small bits, Asmi did not charge me for it. But uh, he thought it would look better um, after I put the bike together. So he actually managed, he took this all out and he painted it for me for free, <laughs> which is really nice of him, uh, including the the uh, cages. So all in all, it's uh, it's it's less than a K. I'm probably it's best I don't go to exact figures. Um, but yeah, it starts from 700 and, and goes up. When, when you go up to him and he gives you the draft, right? Uh, is it in soft copy? Do you get to see a preview of it or it just goes one shot? So no, you don't really get to see a preview of it. But what he does is he just sketches it on a paper. Um, so he'll sketch out your bike, what your frame looks like. And then he'll use pencil and literally draw like, you know, like the F1 bits, like where that would sit. Are you comfortable with the angles? Your, you know, where you, you want your name to be, what fonts and all. So, yeah, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a, a digital thing. He's an older guy, um, but obviously a very good craftsman and a good artist. So it's all sketched by hand. The idea for the paint job was uh, to incorporate my family's names. Considering, you know, when I'm on the road, I want to make sure I, I, I stay safe. Don't go too crazy. Don't sprint or don't get any fights or anything so i have my daughter's name on the left hand side um and my son's name on the right hand side and for the top cap i got a custom top cap from caps so k-a-p-z from the uk i think it's not very expensive so that's um the uh the way my my wife and my name was written in that calligraphy for our wedding um for wedding invite so I thought that was kind of uh, a nice touch. And then for the top two, I again, you know, I didn't put my face, although a lot of people ask how come I'm not there. It's because I'm on the bike. <laughs> so I have my wife's emoticon, my daughter, my kid, and my two dogs. So I have a Shetland sheepdog and a French bulldog. Um, so my, my Sheltie is peanut butter, and my French bulldog is jelly. Jelly Chin Chow, and he has one eye. So actually, in the in the French bulldog emoticon, it's a one-eyed Frenchie, which is staying true to uh, to what he is like in real life. So, so that's the reason for the top. And then, of course, we come and we see all these uh, F1 uh, bits. Actually, this is there's two reasons for this. Um, one, this was my first job when I came out of university in 2010. I managed to land a gig with Singapore Grand Prix or Singapore F1 um, in the 2010. So that 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 kind of pays homage to my first job. And secondly, because I'm very fast. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I thought, you know, you don't want it to look too much like the Villier... Uh, uh, yeah, anniversary Ramato, right? It's, you don't want it to be an exact copy, um, so that's why I, I I opted to do like a bit of uh, customization here. The other thing was, a lot of people say, why do you put wind space? It's a no brand kind of thing. I just wanted to make sure that you know it stays true to the true to the frame. Um, I was thinking of putting Win Steve, which is my name. Or putting like I, I mentioned as works so ass works because it looks like a bench but i thought you know over time people might think it's cheesy or a bit stupid so i just kept it as wind space <laughs> I, I do like uh kind of strange not strange but more indie under the radar bikes so my first bike that i got when i started seriously road cycling was a planet x ec130 it's also an aero bike i think it was aero bike of the year for cycling weekly in 2017 or 2018 or something so i i like indie brands planet x was one of them i saw i had a chapter 2 terre in orange also i saw in carousel i'm not sure if you have seen that was a special edition from red station um a tour down under also in orange so i thought you know when wind space came out i saw some videos on it i thought it's quite uh, it kind of resonated with me. Firstly, you know, it's it's it looked the reviews looked really good. It wasn't expensive. Um, it was an arrow rim frame, which is very very uh, uncommon these days. And 
Yeah, Marco is quite a chill guy. I, I think I pulled the trigger pretty quickly. I just kind of went down. I looked at it. I quite liked it. And uh, the price seemed attractive. So I thought, why not give it a try? If I don't really like it, I can just uh, sell it on Carousel. Yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, a wind space. I mean, you can save some money buying this frame. Or it doesn't have to be wind space. Any non-mainstream uh, brand frame, right? Like your S-Works or your Pinarello. You can do a fantastic paint job for like a few hundred bucks. I think it's... I think it's quite worth it, uh, especially you know if you if you're riding the rain or you're trashing it and stuff. It's 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 a it's a good uh, option to have. Okie dokie. Um, so move on to the Instagram Q and A. Um, follow me on Instagram to ask your interview questions for my next interview. Why change Terre to Wind Space? That is a really good question. The Terre was a was a stellar beast of a bike. It was a limited edition, seven out of fifteen in the world. Um, it had this like Maori art, and you know, f for me, when I first saw that, I was I was, I mean, I studied in Australia and Queensland, so that was was really cool. Um, but at the time, I had quite a lot of bikes. Um, I think my wife didn't even know I had the Terry. <laughs> now she <will> know. <laughs> so yeah, she she didn't know that I had the Terry. Um, I kind of just like hid it from her for a year. But uh, yeah, so I, I I I like to try different bikes. Um, but now with the second kid coming along and a lot of commitments, I think it's better. I I I just stick hold on to to my bikes for a longer time. So I I mean, if the question is in terms of Chapter Two Terre and Wind Space, both are are great bikes. They ride really well. They're very stiff. Um, the reason why I actually change is really a cheap excite lah. The, the, there's no like downside or no bad things to the the Chapter Two Terre. It's just yeah. I like to change bikes. <laughs> the first one, what is the frame cost? How much would you sell it for? And what is the price of the build? So I think if I'm not wrong, the frame cost is about, I think it's gone up. So I think it's like uh, 1,000, 5,000, 1,000, US dollars online. I know a lot of people feel like they can get a better deal online than if they go to the local distributor. But for Winspace case, I think that, is, that the reverse holds true. So... I mean, like any other person nowadays, I checked online and I went down and, and, and got the pricing. Actually, the local dealership gives you a better pricing. Um, and somehow you get to hold, hold and feel the thing. You get to see the frame and all, right? It doesn't come in a box and you have to do it yourself. So I, I didn't buy this frame by itself. I bought the whole bike um, from, from Winspace SG. And how much was it? So the whole bike was just below six. <clears throat> Um, but that came with 50mm wheels with uh, I had Trowby Pro 1 tubeless set up I've changed back to clincher just uh, for for ease if I get a puncture I can swap it out on the road really quick it came with Altica cranks of course and a normal uh, front brake as well not e-brakes so that, that yeah that was the price for that how much will I sell it for I can't really sell it for now <laughs> sell it now with uh, my wife's names and my kids names uh but I guess everything has a price. If they want to see my kids' names and wife, uh, wife's face, um, I guess ten k then. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> Why not use electronic shifting? Oh no! So this is electronic shifting. Um, this is Di two. Actually, I do, I do really like electronic shifting compared to uh, to to mechanical. Uh, just so much smoother. So this is mechan this is uh, electronic. It's just that because this is a rim brake and not hydraulic disc, uh, there's still two cables at the front. What and these are for the for the rim brakes, uh, not for the shifting. Not really for the shifting. I think the shifting is is internal, right? It's it's from here, and it runs down. And this is the only cable for for the uh, for. The, yeah, for the gear shifts. You can run it fully internal, but I think many mechanics don't advise that because of the kinks um, of of going in the integrated uh, handlebar, and there'll be a lot of ninety degree angles, and that kind of makes uh, break it, it compromises the braking. So they don't uh, recommend doing that. Do you prefer rim or disc brakes? Oh, the hotly contested question. <clears throat> so, I. I I'm full on rim guy, right? So I, I don't just like carbon, I like steel, I like titanium, I like aluminium. And most of the non-carbon builds are all rim. 
um, I know it's changing now, but if you want to stay traditional, they're all rim. The other thing is that all my wheels, I have quite a few wheels, they're all rim, so I like to swap them around. Uh, I think the last thing that's the most important thing is I do ride with a uh, majority of guys who are on this, I think. I think at least 70-80% in any group ride. And uh, the amount of problems or the or the frequency of problems with disc brakes is still extremely high. So whether you are riding with a ex-national or with a mechanic or whatever, they still get like brake squeal. Almost one out of five rides, there'll be some guy with a disc brake issue. Whereas the rim brake is like on the fly, you can, with the e-brake, you can just literally like, you know, adjust it with one hand and and your problem is solved. Disc brake is like, wow, it's just, it's just so, so painful, man. I, I don't think I want to go down that route until, you know, they, they clean up the egg or they, you know, improve on the technology. I think I'm happy with this. Singapore is a pancake anyway, right? There's, there's no way you require disc brakes, even if you're going up Faber like 20 times or 50 times or whatever, your rim brakes will work perfectly fine. So yeah, that's 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 my rationale, and I'm I'm still convinced uh, rim brakes for the win. We missed out one very important part. Uh, what is the weight of the bike? That's a good question. I think William has a, has a little tool to uh, measure it, so I can't I can't bluff my way through. I think it is it was seven point four without pedals before I painted it. So it's seven point six with pedals. I think now with the paint, it was two hundred grams more. Oh, and, and before that, it was also 50mm wheels. Um, but I think it should be somewhere around 7.8 7 with the pedals and with, you know, all my mounts and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Steve. Uh, awesome bike, man. And I will we'll weigh your bike and we'll find out the honest truth about the weight. Uh, thanks for coming out, man. And I, I don't know if I get the chance to film your other bikes, uh, hit me up. And yeah, you guys, if you want me to feature your bike, just DM me on Instagram and... I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much, Steve.